Que pasa mi amigos, it's Nima here, and I want to talk about a game I got recently called Karan's Crypt. It's a fantastic dungeon crawling, puzzle solving, action adventure game with one of the coolest mechanics I've seen in a while, and it's all through the lens of a Game Boy Color. Fantastic game. Before we get into that, I do want to remind everyone to please like and subscribe. Everyone who subscribes will get five minutes of free amateur therapy. I'm here for you. I got your back. Anyway, in Quran's Crypt, you play as the ferryman who guide souls across the river Styx. As the story goes, there is one king who refuses to accept his fate of eternal damnation, and it's your job to capture his soul and bring it to the underworld where he can finally rest. But upon this mission, you were captured in an urn. This king resorted to some kind of dark magic and trapped you in an urn. Then had a bunch of mages and blood magic and architects actually build a ever-winding deep crypt and buried you in there. And it's your job now to figure out how to get out of this crypt and to finally reclaim that king's soul. Through your adventures through the crypt, you'll find a lot of gothic overtones, a lot of darkness, uh, you know, very reminiscent of like Castlevania type uh, style, if you will. Um, but I do really like some of the stories that are told in tomes and pages that you find. They're really interesting and engaging. I, I would say it does a much better job of telling little side stories and, um, and, and giving you that engagement uh, better than like a Dark Souls does with a lot of their um, same kind of storytelling. Because it's not really your story. It's a, it's a different story. There's a few of them that you read on and you're kind of excited to find the next page uh, but this game isn't really so much narrative driven and so the story it doesn't matter but it's done really well what this game really does well is puzzle solving dungeon crawling like it's so much fun this game just really sucked me in I, I planned on just playing for uh, 20 30 minutes of giving it a try and I just kept playing and playing and it would seem like whenever a path would close, another one would open. And as soon as I hit like a dead end, then I would find the solution to another puzzle and just keep going. This game really has a lot to it that shine in the mechanics of being able to essentially enter a host body, if you will. Uh, the enemies that you come across, you um, have to stun them and then you enter them and you can control them. And basically any enemy on the screen, you're able to possess and their physicalities also change, meaning like you can and you can become a bat and the bat can fly over holes in the ground or uh, any creature that has arms, you're able to push objects. So navigating the dungeons, puzzles and everything becomes relevant to what, who, what and who you're possessing as well as what items that you have or what items that you might need and uh, essentially uh, some certain like basic puzzle dynamics such as just moving statues in the right spot. But they're all at play here and I think they do such a great job just with that. But let alone every enemy that you possess also has different abilities. So you can kind of range back and forth between, okay, if you're about to fight a boss, which enemy do you want to possess? Which one do you want to go in at the hardest? Also, I will say that there is a different dynamic in this game as far as saving, because you reach these little like cauldrons that have like this green plasma, if you will, and it fills up your health. But at the same time, this is where you can save. The only way you can save, though, is if you burn these tomes that you have to purchase or you can find every now and then, which does give it a little bit of, like, extra... I don't know, I would say like a little bit of extra pressure. Like, hey, you want to be careful when you save. You're not going to always be able to save. Or you're going to want to stash up money so you can purchase saves. That kind of dynamic, I think, is just a little bit of extra stress, if you will. But not in a bad way, just in a way to, to keep the game maybe on an edge. Give you a little bit of difficulty, if you will. I also really like the boss fights in this game. They're difficult enough to be fun, but they're not too overwhelming as to um, make you disengage. I also like the aspect of them being kind of pattern-based, like that old Legend of Zelda style. 
and uh, letting you know like oh this is a boss like th they have very unique details and abilities assigned to them as well as usually they're bigger uh but it, this game really does have a lot of those components that i just really like and I, I would say it really snuck up on me. I didn't think I was going to like this game as much as I did. Um, but when I talked about the last game that I reviewed, I, I talked about a lack of passion, a lack of heart. And this is a great example of a game where that passion just spills through the game. And it's something you can take in and enjoy. And it really makes a game just okay to really, really good or even great. And I think that's what I get from this game. This is uh, something I would easily recommend to a lot of people, as well as the fact that the price point is low, and it's just so creative and fun. Um, I recommend it to pretty much anyone. But um, let me know if you guys have picked it up, or if you're thinking about it, or if this is a game you've just never even heard of, and you just kind of stumbled upon this. Uh, I'm curious what all your thoughts are. Anyway, thanks a lot, guys. Have a great day.